one of the best presentations that I've heard in a long time was just a, a, a couple of hours ago by James Langford and talking about I've never heard a presentation more heartfelt uh, and compassionate than he did on the unborn. And I, I couldn't touch that, but I, there are a couple of things I wanted to add that uh, perhaps were not on his, um, his uh, he didn't have time to get around to, but it's, it's really important that we recognize this. Um, we're celebrating this March for Life at an, uh, it's taking place. It's something that's happened each year for a long time now. I've always enjoyed being a part of it. We have groups, large groups of people that come up from Oklahoma. However, it's virtual this year, as everything else is. But it's more important than ever under this new administration and its radical abortion uh, practices and the personnel that has been uh, suggested will be part of the administration. So uh, it's going to be a, a, maybe a greater fight than it's been in the past. In light of that, I'm introducing a bill I've introduced before. We've never been able to get it uh, passed, but it's called Protecting Individuals with Down Syndrome Act, which will prohibit abortions being sought because the unborn baby has Down syndrome. Um, all abortion is tragic, but this population has been specifically targeted in the United States. And it's just turned out this way. There's no law that influences it. But in the United States, approximately 67% of the unborn babies diagnosed with, with um, uh, Down syndrome are aborted. Now, all lives have inherent worth, regardless of their chromosome count. I think we all understand that. But my fight doesn't stop here. I'm also joining my colleagues in, in introducing several pro-life bills as we prepare for the March for Life including uh, Senator Sass. He has a, a bill that is the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. His bill ensures that a baby who survives an abortion will receive the same treatment as any child naturally born at the same age. People don't realize this. The babies that are where there has been an attempted abortion and they survive the abortion, they don't get the medical treatment that they normally would get which is that's, that's, this bill directly addresses. And it's, it's been going on for a long time. We, I have a feeling that we have an opportunity. The numbers are changing in our direction in terms of the, the unborn and have been for some time. Now, my wife, Kay, and I have uh, been married 60 years. We have 20 kids and grandkids. So I know something about babies, I know something about babies that are, are born. And I looked up and I saw, because of the great presentation that Senator Langford gave, I was looking for some material I'd used in the past. It is 28 years ago, I came down here to tell a story about Ana Rosa Rodriguez. This is what I said. Now this is taken out of the, I was in the house at that time. It was in the house record. And this is what I said at that time. I said, Mr. Chairman, there's a big misconception regarding abortion and the issue of women and their right to protect their bodies. It is not that right that I object to, but the right that is given them to kill an unborn fetus, an unborn baby. I want to share with you a story that my colleague Chris Smith told me some time ago on this floor. It was about Ana Rosa Rodriguez. She is a, an abortion survivor. She, um, at birth, she was a healthy three-pound baby girl. Except for her injury, she was missing an arm. Uh, Anna survived a botched abortion. Her mother attempted to get an abortion in her 32nd week of pregnancy when she was perfectly healthy, perfectly healthy, eight weeks past what New York state law legally allows, in the unsuccessful abortion attempt, the baby's right arm was ripped off from her body, but they, they failed to kill Anna Rosa. She, she lived, and I got to know her after that. Pro-life supporters agreed that nightmare situations like the Rodriguez case 
are probably not all that common, but abortion-related deaths and serious injuries occur more often than most people are aware of. It's amazing that we can pay so much attention to issues such as human rights abroad and can allow the violent destruction of over 26 million children here at home. We're fortunate that Anna was not one of those children. She survived. Now, that was in 1992. I was in the House at that time. But today, we still don't have explicit federal protections for babies who survive the brutal abortion process. Now, as I said, this issue is not about abortion, but about caring for a baby outside the womb. These kids, are they failed an abortion, so they're alive. In most cases, they're in a hospital setting, in many cases anyway, and yet they don't get the same term. They don't look at them as someone that you can, you can save. You don't want to use life-saving talents on these babies. The need for these protections has become even clearer as we see that states like New York and Illinois that allow abortion for virtually any reason up to the point of birth and support infanticide by removing protections for instance, born alive after a failed abortion. Just a few years ago after that uh, speech that I gave in 1997, I was on the floor with my good friend, uh, former Senator Rick Santorum to try to pass a partial birth abortion ban and end the horrific practice of late-term abortions. Fortunately, we won the battle against partial birth abortions and finally ended that practice in 2003. That ban was upheld by the Supreme Court in 2007. But we have yet to pass legislation banning late-term abortions. Only seven countries allow abortion after 20 weeks, including the United States and North Korea. Now, that's horrific. The United States is supposed to be an example in regards to global human rights. Yet we're on par with North Korea when it comes to protecting the unborn. Senator Graham's uh, Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act would help roll back this horrific practice by prohibiting abortions after 20 weeks post-fertilization. Now that's when we know that the babies can feel, it's not even debatable, they can feel the pain at that time. It's another common sense bill that should not divide us along party lines. A baby is a baby, whether in or outside of the womb. And each baby deserves a chance to live as an individual created in the image of God. There's still much more we need to do to end the abortion on demand culture. Under the last administration, we protected the Hyde Amendment we reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy and stripped abortion providers like Planned Parenthood from using Title X, uh, Title X um, uh, fund, funding for abortions. And unfortunately, President Biden is trying to undo all of these accomplishments that we made in the last administration. The need to stand up for our babies is as important today as it's ever been, certainly in 1992 and 1997 when I quoted from talks I made back at that time. And we'll overcome evil with good by upholding and affirming the dignity and inherent worth of every human being. We'll just keep fighting and we're gonna win this one. I thank the chair and I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.